1839, there was a captain in the Russian Mining Engineer Corps named Vasily Yevgrafovich Samarsky Bichevets. But we'll just call him Samarsky for short. He wasn't tall, he wasn't handsome, at least not notably so. He was a little bit smarter than the average Joe. A nobleman by birth and in the military, adept, and that's all history, remembers of his life. Except, one day inside his mind he found a curious thing, and sources shrug. Was it actually him or perhaps an underling? Well, either way, Samarsky said to have gotten his hands upon a jagged stone resembling caramel, if it was cooked for far too long. He had the bright idea to send his find across the border, see if German chemists could upon this rock impose some order. And eight years later, after a rather tantalizing pause, they named the mineral Samarskites. Of course. The years went by, Samarsky died without his lot, never to know the secrets of Samarskite, soon unlocked by a Frenchman who discovered chemical elements all over the place and faced with naming his latest find in Samarskite, played it safe, and thus via these Russian, German and then French diversions, Samarium was the first chemical element to be named after a person. Samarsky was just some guy, but he found a neat rock, and now he's immortalized in element number 62 on the periodic table. Note to me and you, next to Einstein, Curie, Rutherford, all of scientific pedigree with excellence assured. But Samarsky hardly qualifies as a scientist. Yet Samarium's his element, so add him to the list. In 1919, there was an organization established for the standardization of elements called the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. But we'll just call it IUPAC, because that's a hell of an element organizational name, giving element moniker origins fame, Samarians by but one and a long line of Everstall sign is maintained. Tis they who do forestall Sabarsky's vanishing into the air by enforcing SM in the 62nd square. So, merium has since become essential to humankind, so here are but a few of all the uses one can find. Dating old things with its super long decay, nuclear control rods, anti-shark spray? Magnets, perhaps samarium's main attraction and the one most likely to get from you the best reaction, because there's a decent chance samarium's in the speakers sat atop your head across the room this moment feeding you this goddamn bob. Not bad for this guy no one knows, to be the guest producer on a million songs and shows. Samask has come a long way from his mountainous mine, and thanks again are you pack for keeping his star ashine, for though he wrote no great symphonies and painted no grand murals, his name's on every classroom wall this side of the Urals. Samarsky was just some guy, but he found a neat rock, and now he's immortalized in element number 62 on the periodic table known to me and you. Next to Seaborg, Borker, Pernicus, he did little, but his name will outlive every one of us, for if I eat back survives until the end of time. Then Samarsky will as well, but is that really such a crime? Researching nobodies from long ago is really rather draining. For of this guy, there's precious few descriptions remaining. The wiki page is no good. It's a little brief and bare when everyone else on the periodic tables listed with accolades to spare. I mean, I can't even find an image of this guy online. Yes, this Russian miner, he eludes even Google's data mine. So let this be a lesson for you now, oh casual viewer. Be careful which historical event you try to skew. Because maybe that's it. Maybe you spend several days trawling through the Russian National Archives in the hope of finding out anything else meaningful about this man, his demeanour, his hopes and dreams, any clue as to what he looked like, and every source just sends you back to the same three places. Bland service records, an obituary that at least has the decency to mention he had a wife, and his one-line contribution to scientific history where he's noted only for his benevolence. Maybe there's more out there, but it's probably locked in a vault in Russia or something. Benevolent. Samarsky was benevolent cool. So what have we learnt? 
Well, if by the forces of serendipity you send a curious stone to Germany, and if you're high enough up in the hierarchy and benevolent to some degree, and if 50 years hence a French chemist presents a new element sensed in the rock you dispensed, and IUPAC approves of the name he did choose and one day it's used in magnetic voodoo, then maybe someday someone will write a pointless novelty song about you. And it would go like... Sir Masky was just some guy, but he found a neat rock, and now he's immortalized in element number 62 on the periodic table meant to me and you. Thanks to Lawrence Mendeley of Organessi and all these others whose achievements, they go on and on and on. But first, the OG here to whom they all must pay respect... Is Vasily Yevgrafovich Samarsky Berkowitz?